Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Unity, the free personal media server. Unity makes it easy to access and stream all the files and media stored on your computers from your mobile devices. To download Unity for free, visit getunity.com slash AAA. That's get, Y-O-U-N-I-T-Y dot com slash AAA. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android. This is episode 265, recorded on Tuesday, May 10th, 2016. We're your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. And I forgot to say, go ahead and switch to Gina. And, Yay! and say, I'm Gina Trapani. I'm Gina Trapani. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I always mean to include you in the opening thing. And I, I, I realize after the fact that I should probably warn you about that first. <laughs> and I should probably tell our, our technical director, Brian, that we're doing that too. Basically, I should tell someone other than my brain. It's a thought that counts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not your fault, Jason. I should just know by now. You should know. Should yeah, know. you're right. You should, Brian. So let's blame <laughs> Brian, you. Brian, if you were, if you were any good at your job, you would be able to read Jason's mind. I know, right? <laughs> I think Jason really wants to see this film. Oh, again. Sure. <laughs> sure. Is, that, is that not what you're thinking? No, that's not what that's not what's up here. Uh, Gina, it's great to have you back. Thanks for having me in the lull before the IO storm it, next week. It really is the calm before the IO storm. Yes. Um, yeah, there, there's not a whole lot of news this week. We're gonna talk about a little We're bit just of whistle stuff. for the next hour and a half. Yeah, you wanna do that? Uh, we could maybe uh maybe do a little barbershop quartet. No, uh, let's not well, I, I I did not tune. I'm not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll give you we'll give you the sheets. You can practice, and then next week we'll okay. we'll go ahead and belt something out. Um, we you know we scrounged together a few things that are related to Android in some way, shape, or form. The return of Google versus Oracle. We've got that because that's a thing again. Uh, strategies for Google I/O first timers. New Motorola Moto X flagship leaks and the modular state of smartphones and controlling data consumption while watching live streaming video, specifically Netflix, because it's a data hog. We all know this. Um, I don't know. Should we do it? Brian, are you limber? Yeah, let's are you do ready? this. Yeah, let's fire it. So Jason wanted to make sure there was news for you, so he put news in your news. Stay tuned <laughs> for Android news. news. <laughs> where, is, where is exhibit when you need them? I heard you like news, so I put news in your news. Anyway, uh, all right, so speaking of news, we were talking last, uh, a couple weeks ago, was it last week, a week before, uh, about how the uh, the EU was starting to slap Go uh, Google's wrist, and we talked a little bit about government involvement and things like that. Well, it looks as if our own federal government government is starting to get involved in the, uh, in the world of mobile carriers and uh, OSs, specifically around security fixes. Uh, the FCC and the FTC... Uh, the Federal Communications Commission and the Federal Trade Commission are calling on Google, Samsung, HTC, LG, Motorola, BlackBerry, and Apple to report on how security updates are being handled on the different mobile operating systems. Mm -hmm. They're concerned with the delays in delivering security patches, also mentioning that older devices don't get updates. They also contacted the four major carriers in the U.S. along with TrackPhone and U.S. Cellular. Uh, so it looks as if uh, somebody in the government uh, didn't get the latest Android update and wants to know why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by and large, this is filled out with Android uh, OEMs for the most part. You know, well, I mean, I was going to say except for Apple and maybe BlackBerry, but BlackBerry is an Android OEM now too. So there you go. Well, they are, but they still have got BlackBerry OS yeah. hanging on. My dear life. Do they, are they doing any more devices in BlackBerry OS no, going but forward? They said they were but they still have their legacy ones. Yeah. How can you, you know, it's like yeah. leaving well, somebody on the mountain. That's kind of what this is all about, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to leave somebody on the mountain alone. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know. Gina, do you think uh, when the FCC comes a knocking and the FTC comes a knocking, uh, do when they both does come a knocking? Yes, at the same time. It's a really loud knock. Uh, is. Could this lead to significant change? And I think the better qu the question beyond that is, when would we ever see it? How long would it take? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think this is possible? 
<laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I want this to change. We all want this to change. This is sort of like the scourge, you know, of, of particularly on Android, right? And like, mm-hmm. it, listen, if, if it takes the FCC and the FTC prompting them th- to get the full story, and this is clearly, you know, the first step toward 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 something, toward some movement, it, then then yes, I'm I'm in full support. I want to know why it takes longer for upgrades and security fixes to get out on older phones. Uh, and so I, I'm all in favor. Let's hear it. I want to hear it from everybody. I would like to see one of those like Senate hearings with the room full of people and the cameras and the senator <laughs> from Iowa banging on to asking for order and then calling out the AT&T representative to find out why it took four months for an update to roll out to Samsung users. I mean, like it's it, like the level of granularity that they potentially can get between the Android operating system rollouts and when the individual manufacturer updates happened and things like that. Like this could be very confusing, boring sessions, I think. Um, but it's curious that's, that the government is taking notice and Generally, I'm I, I'm I prefer the government to not get involved because that's when you have you know kind of uh, odd restrictions and uh, you know kind of uh, things forced upon you, which is never good. You want you don't want to stifle innovation, but clearly enough citizens have complained that it got their notice. Maybe this will yeah. be like somebody will enact a law and be like, you have to support this phone for up to two and a half years or else you're going to put the American citizens in grave danger. Mm-hmm. And then that's a huge win for people who are using all those. Hmm. I wonder, yeah, I, I guess what I'm wondering is how do you, how do you make that happen? Like there's obviously a really big bottleneck that's, that's happening time and time again. There's also a lack of interest, I think, to a certain degree for updating older devices when they have new devices coming out. OEMs, you know, by and large, probably want to spend their time focusing on the things that they're going to make them money instead of the things that have already made them money. I know. Um, but I mean, what what about the kind of just the, you know, taking Android specifically, kind of the the big hurdles that are present just in Android in general, as far as this is concerned, you know? And I mean, Google's already doing its part, I would say. It's offering monthly security updates. It's offering this out to it's OEMs. It's doing the hard work for the OEMs when you think about it. So like, we're going to take care except, of these things mm-hmm. for you. Ex- except that, except that there, and most recently, there, there, uh, just uh, a couple of days ago, in fact, last, uh, last week, in fact, uh, there's a critical bug that was de- detected uh, in Android uh, that while Google has gone ahead and patched it as of the May 1st security patch, you know, 34% of Android phones will never get the patch because they're running Android 4.3 or less. Mm-hmm. That's so, insane. You know, so, right. so, there, yeah, so there's a huge, yeah, ba- basically there's a, it's a second story on the run down there, Brian. It's, uh, there, there is a, the security from FireEye uh, detected this uh, this uh, access that allows low privileged apps to access sensitive data that's supposed to be off limits, uh, in- including um, uh, its ca- like call lists and text messages and things like that. Like it's this is bad. Um, and sure, all of us that are current on our phones and getting the security updates are gonna um, are gonna get a patch and it won't be a problem. But we look at the numbers on what on a monthly basis now. How you know how many are running four point three or earlier? They're, they're, this vulnerability will be out there and people are exposed. Yeah. So this is a, it's a great example. No, I mean, that's a perfect example, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And at what point, yeah, like how old are these devices that are running that version of the OS? And I don't know. It, but what are you supposed to do? Just leave those people in the dust? Like, I, I just feel like this Why? becomes, for me, this becomes an issue of classism a little bit it's like the idea that if you can't afford a new phone then you shouldn't Uh-oh. be protected i don't know maybe i'm talking oh, you mean that's, you mean that's what this is illustrating did you say that out loud flo did you say that if you can't afford a new phone you shouldn't be allowed to be protected no, <laughs> no i'm just she, saying that i'm saying that's what that's what it sounds like that's what that yes. sounds that's like what it conveys what the FTC and the fcc would like to prevent right that sort yes. of thing and to right. not like have companies basically rule this this ecosystem that has been created. So then, but where do you draw the line then? I mean, if it's coming from the government, you know, if there is like an action, if this actually leads to some sort of like action on the government, the government says, this is the line and we are Mm -hmm. drawing the line. You have to support, you know, provide support for two years, let's say. Yeah. But, you know, who knows the history? I mean, we've seen that versions stick around for a really long time. Maybe two years isn't long enough and that still leaves 
X percentage of people very completely true. unprotected. Like, where do you ever draw that line? Here. Because you're always going to screw somebody yeah. in that yeah. regard. So I don't, I don't I mean, know if that helps. Haven't it wasn't back in like 2011 or 2012? There was the Open Handset Alliance put together the Android yeah. Update Alliance, and all these companies got together and they said we're going to issue timely updates within 18 months. All of our handsets will be upgraded, and that and everybody was like, "Yay!" And then we heard, and then it was just like crickets. Oh, complete. Crickets. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. right? It was like okay, nothing this thing came happened. of it. Mm -hmm. Nothing's yeah. going on with it. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if they can't do it themselves. And obviously they, they tried to do it. They made that announcement. I'm, I'm looking up. I'm looking up the news stories now. This is back in like May of 2011. It's 2016. 2011. That's like before yes. I started covering Android. This has been going down. Yeah. Thank you. That's that's uh, Brian's interpretive dance of the Open Handset <laughs> Alliance. Uh, for the it is the song years. of my people. <laughs> I just think we need an entire just overhaul. I, mean, I might get too deep into it, but I was listening to like a podcast the other day just about like e-waste and all that. And so whenever mm -hmm. I think about like old phones, I just think about, okay, we're going to get rid of those phones. Where are they going to go? So it's just this whole like train of thought that goes, we really need to kind of overhaul what we're doing with all these little devices that are a part of our lives and figure out where our future it's, they fit in our Man, you're, get, you're getting you're getting you're getting you're getting uh, existential after your birthday now, aren't you? It's like, <laughs> oh, another year. Ron, the, it's what, a new decade. What do you expect from me? <laughs> where, where are all these new? Where are all these phones gonna go? You guys know that there there's there are landfills around the world filled yes, with phones. So many <laughs> landfills. I mean, Wow. We, uh, this Anthony is an introspective just cocktail that this just is, arrived. This just arrived at <laughs> just the right time. This is perfect. Oh, I Thank you. I, I think you should, you should drown your sorrows That's, in this. That flower. looks to way humanity better. and smartphones. All right. Cheers <laughs> with the juice. Um, that looks lovely. All right. Ooh, let's delicious. move on from this existential um, <laughs> crisis. <laughs> crisis. <laughs> I had to take it there. Sorry. But I, have to, but I have to take a drink first uh, and talk about something else that maybe we don't necessarily want to have to talk about because we already have talked about it many times. Let's see if I can get central about this too. <laughs> <laughs> Google versus Oracle. It's the gift that keeps on giving, kind of like that canker sore that just won't go away. Um, the two companies oh returned to court for the second time after their first bout resulted in a hung jury and a retrial. As a refresher, Oracle charges that Google is using 37 Java APIs in Android without proper arrangements and as such should be paid damages. They're saying upwards of around $9 billion for copyright infringement. Um, Oracle opened by kind of painting a picture of Google knowingly skirting the licensing issue in order to, uh, well, basically reap massive revenue uh, to the tune of $42 billion off of 3 billion activations. Google says that Android was built with the hard work or stress that it was built with the hard work of its engineers and its use of Java is fair use. That's his point. That was his point last time. Um, and that's kind of what it's going after now. Who also points out that Oracle was supportive of its use of the code very early on and for quite a while as Android was maturing, including then CEO of Oracle, Jonathan Schwartz, who supported Google actually during their previous trial and will be supporting Google uh, during this trial again. And uh, so that all started up again today. Eric Schmidt was also called to the um, to the stand. Obviously, Google's former CEO, current Alphabet chairman, and uh, he just really again stressed that positive relationship that Oracle and uh, Google shared when Android was beginning. They were romping through the field of flowers together, and then something happened, and they stopped calling. Uh, I don't Can know. Can I just say how nicely you explained that entire thing? By the way. Oh, it was yeah. very nicely yeah. relayed. I just want to say, yeah. job well done. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate I understood that. all of that. Excellent. Uh, well, and that's where we are now. That we don't really have much more other than that. I mean, this but, has been this is like the Apple versus Samsung like oh, cotton totally. Dispute, it just right? will never it's just go take away. Forever. Mm -hmm. This is going to take forever. We got two really big companies fighting against each other for intellectual property rights. For a long, I, I love, a I love that Oracle's arguing that, that, that Google made $42 billion off of 37, like, you know, function signature like calls. Like, I, like, I love that. That's, that's amazing. Isn't it crazy uh, how much it's, stuff see. costs? <laughs> like, the value of these things? I don't wow, know. There's lots of money in this world. No, no there, it's true. it is, though. I mean, just like, oh, here are these APIs. Well, They're like, all worth, like, almost a billion. Well, you know, and that whatever. is Oracle's side I that know. it came up with the estimation based on, you know, who knows Insane. what numbers they dug up and how they kind of twisted around the logic to make that. Um, 
you know, gar uh, go gargle, Google, <laughs> gargle. <laughs> different, different company entirely. <laughs> Google has argued that uh, APIs can't be copyrighted. It's that whole kind of argument that, you know, code is numbers, basically, and numbers can't be copyrighted. Like HTML which, can't be copyrighted. Uh, it's, yeah, although that's numbers. And yeah, no, I, I think it's probably falls into the same category. Mm -hmm. um, they lost that fight on appeal. Now they're hoping that the fair use kind of um, thing is going to work. And I, we also talked actually on this show about Swift. Yeah. I think this was like a month ago yeah. that there were sources that were saying that Google's looking at Swift, which Apple created initially. Mm -hmm. But that's an open source uh, language that Google's considering that as the kind of next or eventual first class language. Do you think that that kind of move would be necessary in the long term, Gina? And what kind of disruption do you think that would that would cause? I got to tell you, the first time I heard of this was looking at the rundown earlier today. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was my reaction. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait what? Yeah. <laughs> um, that would that would blow my mind. But I mean, look, if Java <laughs> is costing them uh, billions of dollars in in uh, in lawsuits. And I mean, look, you know, Swift is a much more modern language than Java. Uh, I mean, obviously, Google is just heavily invested in Java and Android. But um, I, mean, I, I don't think that you can you can rule anything out. It's open source, and um, I, I think Google will probably be really smart about establishing what what Apple considers fair use. Uh, yeah, when, what I <laughs> when they start using Swift. But wouldn't yeah. it be interesting if we were using the same programming language to write iOS and Android apps? I think that that could be really good. Sounds beautiful. Um, and I, I I agree, and that could and that could potentially stop the madness of a single platform release of apps. My, my <laughs> little uh, pet peeve about, hey, we got a new app that, you know, like a uh, talk show, that app everyone was talking about, it's great, and it's iOS only. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so if they're all being written in Swift, maybe it becomes easier to uh, deploy code for Android and iOS at the same time. That'd be, that'd be awesome. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yes, this is only just begun. It's only just begun. <laughs> oh, uh, and <laughs> over the next couple of weeks, we're going to hear a lot more about this. Uh, I yeah, I, I suppose we'll see what happens and whether it, it has a big impact on Google or not. I feel like these things though, they kind of happen, and then it seems like it's going to be a big deal, and then even when it rules against you know Google or whatever. We don't really see much change. We probably see it in our pocket, you know, pocketbook more than anything. Uh, prices of things just probably go up a little bit, but I, that kind of goes counter to what we've seen over the past couple of years where devices are getting less expensive, not more. So who knows what that'll mean in the long run. Uh, flow. You know what I want to hear? Yes. I would like to hear our voicemail. That <gasps> we, have we got a voicemail? Chad Schultz, who I'm assuming is no affiliation to the, may he rest in peace, Charles Schultz. No, I'm, I don't know, actually. It's possible. I mean, let us know, Chad. First, let's hear your, your voicemail. Android peeps, I had to throw that in for Flow. I've been an Android developer for four years and always wanted to go to Google I.O. Friday, Google sent me an unexpected email with the opportunity to register. Less than two weeks before the event. Well, don't hmm. kick a gift horse in the mouth. What tips do you Google I.O. veterans have? What things do you wish you knew your first time? Or what strategies do you have to make the most out of Google I.O.? Hmm. Okay, first Good of question. all, Chad, I love your voice. I know, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Chad's a you natural. You need to be, you need, oh, is he? He's, oh, he's, sorry. He's, he's, a, he's no, a natural. A natural. I yeah, she said natural is, a yeah. Frequent <laughs> guest. I don't know where I got that from. I'm sorry. I had coffee He's, before I came here. It's so okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're doing good. This is going <laughs> to mellow you out. I promise. Uh, the drinks, the drink will mellow you out. Um, regardless, Chad, it's kind of hard this year to give you tips just because by virtue, the location where Google I.O. is is very different than where it was last year. Mm -hmm. So I can't give you transit tips, but I can tell you to give yourself plenty of time to get to Shoreline. Whatever. Well, and Method. And, and I'm trying to get anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I was, and, and, and I was going to build off of that saying that it doesn't really matter where the venue is, um, especially for the keynote, get there early to get a seat and to get a good seat. If you get there right when the keynote starts, you might be standing in the back. Yeah. And, that's and no here's fun. the thing, yeah. because yeah. you're going on a developer's pass, you're going to be waiting in a much longer line than those of us in press. So 
We have our own line. They let us in first, usually. <laughs> Got to get that French. in there. Maybe, maybe we, maybe we dial down the privilege. Sorry, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I just mean well, you're gonna see a group of people be let in first, and that's the. <laughs> that happens to be me. So <laughs> make sure you're not blocking my way as I'm oh. going through the door. Just get out of the way so that I can get my seat. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. Um, Chad, make sure and say hi to Flo when you're in Google I.O., okay? Watch, I'm like, they let, they let press and lash just because of me, and then Chad's being like, ha sucker. Yes, I'm they're like, there at the line, oh, they're like, I mean, wait a minute, you're Flo. We heard what you said on All About Android. You go to the back of the line. Oh, she's, she's, yeah. she's falling deeper Where's into the Where's my home? Homer Simpson goes into the bush meme? Yes, right. Um, anyway. So, so not to look Flo in the eyes as get you Get there as early. You walk. Yeah. They will feed you, which is kind of nice. They gave everybody like Krispy Kreme and Starbucks last year or something like that. Or maybe it was yeah. boudins. Uh, bring, oh, there's going to be water stations everywhere, which would be good because it'll probably be like eight, between 80 and 90 degrees in Mountain View. Probably. And You'll very be getting muggy. Summer, so bring sunscreen. Um, bring layers because it will get cold at night. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. There's snack stations everywhere, so you can refill. Oh. There's usually little cups next to the snack stations, and you just like fill them up. I like to bring my own Ziploc bags. Mm -hmm. That's good. Maybe I shouldn't tell Google good, about this. It's a good tip. How about, how about less about snacking and more about like stealing? <laughs> Listen, all the snacking is everything about Google I.O. Because when you're going from right. session to session, and you have nothing to eat. It's true. So I, the here's the tip. Here's a tip that I wish that I had known when I had first gone to my first Google I.O. So, so you're, you're really excited. You're a developer. You're going. You, like, get the schedule. You pick out all the things you want to go mm -hmm. to. And you'll notice on the schedule when they put it out before the event, there are these, like, vaguely named sessions, like new things in Chrome yeah. or, like, new Android things. Well, the keynote happens, and then the schedule gets updated with the names of the thing, the new things mm -hmm. that they announced, like, during the keynote. Um, so go to the sessions about the new things that they <laughs> announce at the keynote versus, like, sticking to the stuff that you picked, you know, maybe when you got there. And often, in particular, developer, developer sessions, they'll give out stuff, right? Like, Jason, you've gotten give giveaways, mm -hmm. uh, Nexus TVs and, and, and developer, like, tool like, toolkits and stuff, separate from whatever gift you're going to get just for being there that everybody gets. Right. Um, so, and you can kind of predict by looking at the session names, you know, uh, whatever, if there's something about uh, Aria or any of the hardware sessions, you know, there's a good chance there'll be a hardware giveaway. Uh, and just get to sessions really early. There's often lines of developers oh, waiting yeah. outside of sessions. So if there's a session you want to get to, the keynote certainly, but if even just regular sessions, like if you have to skip the session beforehand to get online for the one you want to get to, uh, do that. Yeah, and a lot of them are are streamed to the web. And a lot of times those yeah, are what, probably the more popular ones so those yeah. especially you're probably well, gonna want to get to pretty yeah, early if you want to actually be sitting in there very it's like uh it's like comic-con you you know you gotta line up ahead of time yeah. get yourself a seat if you want to sit with your friends you know but definitely definitely go through this schedule now there's a ton oh, yes. of stuff in there they make it really easy through the app and through the site to kind of get a tentative plan of what your days are going to look like mm -hmm. if if what you want out of this is to go to maximum kind of uh you know talks to you know, for your learning path, then you'll want to kind of get really familiar with this and really understand going into it. Not not decide on the fly necessarily, but like Gina said, at some point things open up and that'll kind of throw everything out of whack a little bit, and you're going to have to retool it. But at least have a general idea going yeah. into it what what's really important to you and you know how to maximize your time there. And uh, the app is fantastic. Definitely yeah, download it's really the nice. app. It will have maps to where all the locations are. Mm -hmm. So it'll, it'll help notify you. Get around the you. It'll no notify you when you have a session coming up. It'll let you know if you have two sessions kind of bumping into each other. So you can decide at the time, like, oh, which one do I really want to go to? Mm -hmm. um, what I do is honestly, I kind of like go in, I just add everything that sounds really interesting to me. And then when the day comes after the keynote, that's when I sort of pick and choose and decide like what I'm going to go to. For me, I mean, I pick more less developer centric sessions. I'm more interested in sort of like the overarching sessions, mm -hmm. but so you are going to want to give yourself some time if you do want to go and like do some code labs, like you want to give yourself some time to do that. Also kind of from, from a mind frame uh, point of view, like it depends on what you really want to get out of IO, but high concentration of people who are all there for the very same reason, right? So a big reason for IO, number one is obviously information, uh, going to these talks, you know, learning things. 
another really big part of it is just meeting people. Networking. Talk with people. Making friends. Uh, you know, because those could be people that you do projects with going forward. And, you know, you, you just really don't know. And that leads to going to an event in the evening that isn't part of this schedule. But, you know, such and such company is throwing it. And you end up meeting a bunch of cool people there. And that could be an entrance into something else. So yeah. try, and, try and be social. Sometimes... I, even and like when I go to IO, sometimes like I want to kind of like close in and just do my thing and then be done or whatever. And I find the, t the times that I've had the most fun is when I've kind of broken out of my shell a little bit and Same. just forced myself to yeah. kind of like talk with people. And then that just leads you in so many different directions. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. And give yourself some time to kind of like what. So at Google I.O. at Moscone Center, there's been like there was several levels and they would have kind of like a a sprawl where you can go and experience things. And it was really fun. Like that's how I got to, I don't know, I got to see some of the cool projects that Google is doing. That's how I experienced cardboard for the first time. Mm -hmm. I, one time I sat in a dome that was basically a giant photosphere. It was amazing. Everybody was just sitting in there and napping, which is kind of, you know, that's the vibe of IO. I don't know how it's gonna be laid out this year, but definitely give yourself some time to like walk around and just do a little, Seeing around, seeing what's going on. Sampling of your environment. Yeah, you don't, yeah. exactly. Sampling your environment, see if there's any like fun stuff you want to do. Um, there's going to be a lot of just like, I think Android fan centric yeah. things like make your own stickers or something like that. It's a lot and of fun. I would, say, I would say for Chad or anyone else in the audience that's going to Google I.O., if you find yourself reaching into the snack bin at the same time as Sundar, or as Hiroshi, or as any top-level Google exec, say, oh, hey, I love all about Android. Do you watch? And see what they say. Yes, <laughs> yes. Be, be armed to tell them that at the very least, because once you actually meet them for the first time, you could end up doing w what I did when I met Matias Duarte and just, like, going, like, you're really cool. And instead, <laughs> what you could say is, is like, we really like all about Android. You should be a guest sometime. Just saying. Yeah. You know, great something like that. Do you want to try and ask him this year? Uh, if you should come on as a guest. We'll, can we'll be go together woman. and then you can talk and I'll just kind of go. For <laughs> That's pretty much how it would go. <laughs> Hope that's helpful. <laughs> oh, and there will there will be two parties this year instead of one. Oh, really? I did not know this. Well, I just looked at the schedule and I saw there was like um there's a party on the first night, the big party, and then there's another like So when is Radiohead playing? Seriously. When is Radiohead probably playing? Probably the first night. Okay. All right. Assuming they are playing. <laughs> they are not playing. But oh I don't know. My do we wanna do we wanna take like bets on who the band's gonna be? I don't know. I never no. would have guessed that Jane's Addiction would play or, or Billy Idol would play. So I don't think I'd be very good at guessing. Yeah, I'd probably. Sometimes they go into the uh, the discount barrel for their. Metallic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Nice to Billy Idol. Be nice. I don't, I don't know. It really felt I like, like Billy, Billy Idol, Idol was just cashing it in. Well, if you're, if you're in Billy Idol's shoes. In 2014, you would do the same thing. <laughs> no, I believe me. Uh, yes, you're right. I would. Uh, it just felt wrong watching him up there because you could just tell, like, that well. he understood what was going on. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> he's like, here Jeez. I am. Hey, I go hey, watch. Out. It'll be like, right, it'll be like Jewel yell. or like Sheryl Crow, and she'll like <laughs> come out and be like, all I want to do is have some fun. That could totally happen. Wouldn't that be amazing yes. if it was Sheryl Crow? Nothing will ever beat the the Web 2.0 summit I went to in 2006. Uh, AOL had hired uh, Lou Reed of the Velvet Underground to play, and nobody cared, and he oh. was not. Happy. And it was it was me and about 15 other people watching freaking Lou Reed play for us in the Palace Hotel in San Francisco, and uh, it was it was quite embarrassing, and then uh, Lou Reed got oh. mad and turned their amps all the way up to drown out the conversation that was going on in the ballroom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Know, those, those, are those, always... those, those, those could be awkward moments. So, they can. Yeah. Uh, the, the one saving grace is this is at Shoreline, so I'm imagining that will happen on the actual Shoreline stage. And if that's the case, uh, then it'll actually seem, it won't seem like, like a conference a concert. concert. I think it would actually be. <sighs> Anyways, we're totally off topic. Uh, check that out too, Chad. We're daydreaming. All right. Let's, that's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. Let's thank the sponsor of this episode uh, brought to you by Unity. Unity is a free app that unifies your media. It actually lets you seamlessly stream and access all of your, uh, your media content, your videos, your photos, music, your documents, 
uh, that happen to be stored across all your computers and your mobile devices. So giving you kind of instant access wherever you happen to be, whatever device you're using. All your files are kept secure and private on your own devices. No clouds, no middlemen involved. Setup is quick. It's easy. Uh, no network configuration or ongoing management of any kind, which can, which can kind of cloud the uh, you know the setup and all that. It's all taken care of with Unity. And Unity works cross-platform, currently with Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac. So you can do a lot of awesome things, obviously, and you can kind of use your imagination for how you get all of your, your media shared between these places. But a few, few ideas, you can stream your video and your music collections on demand. So think of your like your collections at your home computer as like your music streaming service, essentially. You can even access iTunes music on your Android device. You can access all the photos on all of your computers, including Lightroom catalogs and Apple photo libraries. Uh, post photos stored on your computer directly to Instagram, let's say. Access documents across multiple computers while you're out and about on the go. Uh, you can unify all your content across your computers into one organized menu inside the Unity app. And uh, one thing that makes that even more uh, powerful is just search across all that content. So it makes it easy to find it. Even though it's all pulling from different computers, you can search and get right to all of it in one place. Download any of your media to your mobile device for unlimited offline access. Let's say you're going on a trip or whatever, you could do that. And you've got all the media you need to keep yourself entertained on the flight. And keep large files off of your phone save that storage space, still have access to them. And it's free. Above all, it's free. To connect your devices with Unity, just install Unity on your computers, then download the Unity mobile app. Visit getunity.com slash AAA to download Unity for free, and you'll get unlimited access to all your stuff on the go. That's get, Y-O-U-N-I-T-Y dot com slash AAA. We thank Unity for their support of all about android all right we've got a few things to talk about in hardware so let's do it uh htc 10 i've been i've spent I still some time haven't been like i still haven't used it because i was just so busy on finishing up that shootout I did last week. Yeah, I know. That was a monster photo <laughs> shootout. Yes, you saw why it took me so long. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, what was your verdict? It was between... Uh, well, my verdict my verdict was the GS7 is the the better overall like phone camera to have in hand. Over the iPhone 6S. 6S. Yeah, right? because it does all the post-processing. Yeah. A lot but of the now, are very similar. Yeah, but now I'm curious, you know, what you think about the HTC. T have you used it to shoot? Um, yeah, I have. And I would actually say that I'm less impressed with the, the camera aspect of the HTC 10. I'd, I wouldn't say that the, the pictures were bad necessarily, but when I finally kind of brought them into, um, into the computer and really looked at them there, sometimes a little flat. I don't know. Some things just looked a little not as sharp as I'd seen with like the S7 and everything. Not bad, but not not as instantly like obvious that it was amazing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, kind of what we've been getting used to with uh, some of the other phones. Oh, I just teased my app uh, for today. <laughs> um, I, I think the big selling point for the HTC 10 in my in my opinion is design. And as you guys know, I'm a, a sucker for The silver for, one looks design. really nice. Yeah. Like, I like I really that you like can it. see the edges a lot more Clearly, then you can on the black one. I just, I like the angles. I'm yeah. really into them. I agree. And actually, the angles look nice, but they're also really super comfortable. Like, mm -hmm. there's a nice contour. You don't feel um, any jaggedness from the metal? Like, you don't feel no, any sharpness? No, I don't feel that at all because everything everything is really rounded for the most part. Um, I, I feel it's really nice. I think the one downside, of course, is that it's kind of slippery. Like, I've got the, uh, the ice view case mm. uh, on order. So I'll, I'll be able to use that with this a little bit to kind of protect it, but it also has kind of that layer over the top to give you a new, a, a different screen, even though it's protected. Yeah. And you can do things like use the camera and, and take a phone call without having to open it all up yeah. and everything. So you've got options there. Um, so speaking of camera, what do you think uh, taking photos compared to your 6P that you've got on hand? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I feel like I get a little bit better quality out of 6P than I do out of yeah. the camera on here. Mm. Uh, Interesting. Anecdotal. I mean, I've taken, I've, I've definitely taken plenty of pictures. I haven't done them side by side, but just kind of after pulling it up on the desktop and really looking at it on my monitor as opposed to the tiny little screen here, 
I mean, I guess I can pull up. Do you think if Googs or whomever uh, were to make this the next, like, Nexus looking device, do you think that uh, you like the design of the HTC 10? Yes, I do. See, you can go in there. Do you think you would like that as a as a plain old Nexus device, just kind of yeah? Oh, I think it would be. I think it would be great. However, you call it, I would love to see this as as kind of the design direction. I like it. I think it just looks like a nice. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. we go, taking pictures of our. I know. Of our I, have drink. So, I have so many pictures <laughs> in my in my <laughs> photo uh, photos .google of this table from when we're doing demos. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I like the design a lot. I think that's a really big selling point in my opinion. The speaker, there's a speaker, a front facing speaker there, and then a speaker down at the bottom shooting outwards, which I think is a little odd. And I actually use a speaker on my phone a lot these days and it just feels kind of Is it because your Bluetooth is broken in your car like mine is? Well, my, my stereo is broken. <laughs> so yes, it's the same, same deal. Uh, but I listen to it a lot through speakers and like the 6P has an excellent speaker pair. This feels really tinny and just really? kind of brittle. That's unfortunate because yeah. I love the speakers on the M7 and the M8. Mm -hmm. uh, check this out. What is it? Is it two down? Yeah, two down on the screen is like a quick launch for your camera. So that's kind of neat, I suppose, um, to, to jump to it. Um, I found I find Wi-Fi to be a little finicky. Uh, and Wi-Fi? Yeah. Like, you know, I found that like some of those things differ by manufacturer. Yeah. Like Samsung's and, really good at Bluetooth. But yeah, and it could be my own personal kind of setup at home or whatever. But mm -hmm. I know, you know, again, anecdotally, but I use other phones and it can it stays connected to Wi-Fi and I don't have like delays for things or whatever. This one, I'm constantly having to like turn off Wi-Fi and switch to mobile Interesting. because it's like not loading. And I don't know if it's this device or not. Feels like it's this device because my other devices don't do that. So worth uh, worth pointing out. How do you feel about the interface? It looks uh, well, like you've you've uh, cleared it out a little bit. I have. <laughs> hey, by the way, Donald Trump won. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, I so yes, I have the Google Now launcher on here. I think what I really like is that you know in things like, I mean that's the notification shade, and that's pretty darn close to stock, right? Um, this wouldn't be painted by the Google Now launcher necessarily. Um, the, the, you know, this is pretty much what HTC has offered. So there are very few things in this version of Sense. And mind you, the launcher, this is Google Now launcher, so you're not seeing HTC's launcher. But um, other things in the system that would normally clue you into that, they still look pretty stock. So, I mean, once I put Google Now launcher on here, it feels like a pretty stock experience for the most part. You see, you see a little bit of that difference when you go into settings, but even there... You know, they've done a really Same good list, job to kind of sit, sit more or less uh, close to kind of standard things. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like it's them just, you know, uh, painting, painting it up all crazy, which they have done in the past. Uh, performance is great. It has support for high-res audio, and I like that. Um, I like to have that as kind of a bonus. Battery life, yeah, I got to say, yeah. battery is really back and forth. I've had some days that were great, some days that were like, seriously, I'm charging already? Like, why? And uh, so that's kind of a bummer. But, uh, you know, it has fast charge, so that kind of... Uh, you eliminates. know, that happened with me and the Samsungs. It was like, it was great at first, and then it was like, great, doesn't really hold a charge. I guess at least that's fast charging. I can yeah, just keep right. it charged all at least the time. You always, at least you have that, yeah. You know? But overall, I'm, I'm liking it. It has a few shortcomings, but honestly, like I, I think the, the positives far outweigh the, the negatives. And I'm really excited to see what HTC does if they ha do in fact have two Nexus devices coming this year as rumors are, are kind of pointing to right now. Have you taken so. it on a weekend like jaunt yet? Because I feel that's the best time to test a phone. It's like you're well, with the family. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, on Mother's phone. Day, we went to wine country yeah. all day and I took it out there and it did all right. You know, again, ma battery life. Like yeah. I, I was, I had to charge it up in the in the car because I felt like I was going to start <laughs> getting to the to the low end of of the battery. So, uh, I don't know. Are either of you enticed, Gina? What are, What are you using right now? I, I think I ask you this every single every single time you're on, but you never know. Are you still the OnePlus? Oh, I can't hear you. Oh, oh, there we go. Nope, I can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yep. Nexus 5X. Oh, that's hanging right. Hanging in there. Is yeah, it? still a little kind of janky. It's a little bit janky. I got to like yeah. restart it sometimes. Just like, oh, this is really stuttery. Let me just reboot this phone, uh, which is annoying. Um, but that phone makes me really miss the HTC One, the M7, the M8. I just, I love that MT, that, that HTC design. I just, I love the back. I love the angles. Yeah. It's just a nice phone. It just like felt solid. Although, yeah, I remember it being sli uh, slippery. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm te- I am tempted by that. It is well, very nice. Well, I had the I had the experience this weekend of my sister on Mother's Day taking her to the Verizon store because she was on the M8 and has been holding on for dear life to that phone to the point where something was so wrong with her camera that when she took pictures they had a pink kind of oval frame around the photos. Like it was huh. just it was it was dying. The phone was dying. Like the 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 battery would heat up whenever she downloaded anything on Wi-Fi. Oh. It was just like it was like an end of life phone. It was like really tragic. But she wanted to wait till I was home to help her get a new phone. And at this point, I was eyeing um, one of the LG uh, the L- LG phones for her because the uh, HTC 10 wasn't out yet. And I was surprised to see uh, Verizon had the HTC 10 there and on sale and like good to go. And so uh, we went, we swapped out our phone, and so I actually had the opportunity to take a Verizon bloatware-loaded HTC 10 and set it all up for a new user, and I was super impressed. I mean, aside from the Verizon bloatware, which is a pain in the butt, um, and also dealing with the, I was expecting the the nice Android Bluetooth, you know, put the two phones next to each other and copy mm-hmm. all the settings and mm-hmm. install all the apps. But instead I had to use the HTC uh, device. They have an app that does the same thing basically, which uh, co- copies over. And I'll give it credit because the HTC app copied over contacts, like settings, all that sort of sp- uh, specific stuff, as well as all of your photos on the device, as well as all of your text messages, uh, which the Android one doesn't do, uh, which I find really interesting. So basically she had a replica of her old phone, uh, but the only problem was is that she had to manually install all of her apps. It didn't yeah. have the the Android auto app install kind of function. So it's like, mm-hmm. it was like each each solution is like halfway there, which is kind of interesting. But yeah. um, mm. uh, but that but that said, the, the device itself, I, you know, like uh, charge it up. I, we used it for the day on Mother's Day. I mean, like I didn't get a full, you know, kind of several days to play around with it. And also it wasn't, it's not my phone, but I wanted to spend enough time with it to get a feel for it. And I was really impressed. I think it's a, I think it's a solid phone. And for someone like my sister who is, you know, a teacher and a mother and just like a normal user, it uh, so far so good. I've been asking her to monitor battery life and, you know, she unplugged it uh, from the charger at 6 a.m. when she got up. And then at lunchtime, she said it was down to 79%. Uh, so it's like, you know, six hours of, of being on, not plugged in, not too bad. Um, she said, you know, made it uh, till she got home before she had to charge it again uh, from school that afternoon. So, I mean, it seems to be hanging in there as a daily use phone. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to have her keep giving me updates, but I think it was the right choice for her. So, yeah. Um, so. I, you, listening to you kind of talk a little bit about the, the fingerprint kind of reminded me of one thing that I'm a little annoyed by. So you've got the buttons down here, right? And if you're using your fingerprint, like my, apparently I have a big thumb or something, because when I use it sometimes, like it'll it'll cover the the fingerprint thing, but it'll also register a tap over there, and so sometimes yeah. that'll do unintended things, or or suddenly it'll pull up that you know the the kind of multitasking mm. window when you're just trying to like unlock it or or go home or whatever. It's a little you know probably a minor quibble, but uh, but yeah, overall I think it's a great phone, and I actually really think that HTC's done a, a good job with this. I don't know if it's a little too late because, man, they just had their earnings and uh, things are just I not looking I wasn't going to bring that up because I didn't hot. know if we wanted to <laughs> get well, into it. But I was thinking about that, too, when I was chatting with yeah, you. Yeah, it is, it is uh, not looking so hot for it's, HTC. We're ho- hoping that this year, you know, they have enough uh, enough reasons, you know, with the HTC Vive and, you know, their new Nexus devices. All the Nexus devices never Never change the status of a company. No, you don't. You don't. <laughs> That's not going to turn. They just help you around. with the Android faithful, yeah, as far as exactly. I'm concerned. Exactly. Um, speaking of faithful Androidites, yes, uh, we should speak about Motorola, mm-hmm. who's been a part of the Android world for quite a long time. Uh, a couple leaks have come out this week about what Motorola is working on. Apparently, the new Moto X devices. There's going to be two of them. They have similar specs, but they will look slightly different from one another. Um, And they will look different from the way that Moto X's have looked in the past. Uh, One is called Vector Thin and will be 5.2 millimeters thick with a 2600 milliamp battery pack. The other is called the Vertex. It's a seven millimeter thin, thick, thin. That's in the notes. It was thick in the first one, thin the second, so I got oh. confused. Um, with a 3,500 milliamp battery pack, um, this sounds like the kind of SKUs that they've been doing at Verizon with the Droid Turbo and the Droid oh, Max, right. like having one with yeah. more battery life and one with 
uh, less than that. Both will have all metal bodies um, as well as pogo pins on the back of the device, which are meant for <laughs> modular swappable parts. Sounds a little uh, LG G5-ish. Uh, both phones will also have a 5.5-inch AMOLED Quad HD display, and the Vector Thin will have a Snapdragon 625, which puts it in the mid-range category, and the Vertex will have a Snapdragon 820 yeah. flagship. chip. That's high-end. That was a lot to go to. Yeah. Uh, go wait, through. wait. What's this Pogo Pins? Business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, um, <laughs> the modules will be it does called- does look a little weird, doesn't it? <laughs> Apparently, there are modules called AMPs, uh -huh. which includes stereo speakers, a battery pack, a camera grip with flash and optical zoom, a Pico projector, or a wide-angle lens attachment. And maybe more. So it just, yes. I'm guessing it attaches on by, like, magnets. Yeah. Oh. The way that's, like, I'm thinking of the way some wearables charge, like how the- Yeah, they, like, know. snap in yeah. place or whatever. Yeah. It'd be a powerful magnet. How does the wide-angle lens get on so that it must be a big module? I know. Yeah. That's why I'm, oh, yeah, maybe it, like, hmm. Well, Does it like, cover the whole back of Yeah, that's of what the... I'm thinking. I'm thinking it like kind of cradles it or something like that. Hmm. hmm. Those are some big camera camera circles, huh? On I know, right? That thing's like <laughs> half the size of the phone. I'm almost, I'm almost, I'm almost wondering if it's, I don't know. Like pre- uh, I'm like almost early. wondering if it's like that just to kind of be like, look at us, we have a, I don't know. A nice camera. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't know that it necessarily means anything. Also, yeah. it just looks like someone photoshopped in a Moto 360 yeah. display. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're right. I'm it has back. a flat tire. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> I'm so used to the flat tire. I didn't even notice. Um, I will but say these. Think, sorry, go ahead, Ron. That, do you think that big circle has something to do with the pack that's going to snap onto it? And yeah, the that's a good point. For that circle, you know, like does the, does the pin on the bottom and then it snaps into the circle up on the yeah. top, maybe. Maybe yeah, there's like but, magnets around it or something to yeah, that extent to but, help like the lens stay in place. I am just thinking that these phone leaks look a little like the Lenovo phones I've seen at hmm. international trade shows. Hmm. Kind of like that thin profile, you know, all metal builds. Mm -hmm. um, Are you impressed with what you see? I mean, it's a like prototype, it? so I yeah. can't be entirely impressed yet. Yeah. I am, I'm a little dubious at this point just because I have you know, been following what's been going on, Lenovo, Motorola HQ, mm -hmm. and it's a little worrisome about the direction that Motorola is going, but it could be good. And maybe I'm just being a pessimist because mm -hmm. I don't like change. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the possibility. Fair enough. So I guess we'll see. Um, there are rumblings that this these phones will be announced June 9th at yeah. a little, yeah. uh, little event called Lenovo. Tech world. Tech world. Tech world in San Francisco, I believe. Yeah. And cool. uh, I'm going. going? Well, uh, well, I got, an, I got an invite. I don't know if I will yeah. be going because I actually i am not working that day. I have to take it off, unfortunately. So I'm probably not. Okay. Well, I'm going. <laughs> so you tell so me what you I'll, see. I'll, I'll let you guys know what I see. Um, <laughs> and, you know, these leaks do come from trusty, Mr. Trusty Evan Blass, a.k.a. I know. Leaks. So there's probably a little that bit. That got of sources. He's got sauces. You know, he's got sources. Yeah, he's got sources so strong that he retired, and they won't let him quit. Like, I, know. Yeah, I, think the whole, uh, I think the whole retirement thing in the past. He's, he's yeah. back. He's back. Possibly. Well, so so those uh, those pogo pins and those amp uh, kind of uh, attachments are very similar as flow as you mentioned to the LG G5 with the little the slide out uh, attachments friends. Um, friends, right? and which yeah. is causing our good friend uh, Dave Ruddick over at Android Police to ask the question is modular a gimmick uh wrote an article saying modular smartphones are now the official gadget gimmick of 2016 and possibly beyond um and posing the question that are these just the gimmick are they necessary does anyone really want or need these attachments and are they going to move the needle and I think it's really interesting because I, I love the modular aspect. aspect. I can't wait for Project Aura. Uh, there, was a, there was another Kickstarter from a year ago of a phone with little, uh, little uh, bits the phone that you snap on. Yeah, the phone blocks, yeah. I, I, love, I love the idea of that, but I'm a specific type of tinkerer. Um, and whether or not this goes mainstream, I have no idea. But, you know, we've talked a lot about stagnation in phone design. And like really, you know, the real only innovation that can happen uh, being on the software side and on the hardware side, we're kind of bound by battery limitations and things like that. But, you know, the way I see it is that these are neat ways to expand what the phone can do with hardware 
it looks kind of goofy, but uh, I don't know if it's a gimmick, <laughs> but I think it's I think it's cool. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, Gina, would you? Goofy. Yeah, Gina, do you see yourself buying a phone that we could snap things onto, or? I mean, I, I, you know, I love snapping things down, you know, like I'm kind of like you, I, <laughs> I can't wait to get my hands. On. I, I would love to build one of these phones, but I don't think it's going to go mainstream. I think this is squarely in the sort of hobbyist, enthusiast, uh, DIY tinker type, you know, folks who are going to, you know, fly, fly phone bits up in balloons and, and make little robots with, with attachments. You know what I mean? Like, I think this is like a, these, these are hobbyist projects. Like this is a hobbyist kit, uh, for folks who are really excited about mobile technology. And I, I would count myself and that I would buy one of these just to play around with it, you know, with my kid and and to try to try different things. Uh, but I don't think it's going to go mainstream. But I don't think that that means that they're not worth making and trying and playing with and seeing, you know, what's possible and what people do with them. It is interesting well, I, that their their research. Uh, I'm assuming they did research before they, you know, attached these to their mainstream products. But that their research indicated that it was worth attaching modularity as a key feature of their flagship devices um you know some somewhere along the line they at least believed that there was some sort of appeal here or they had a focus group or something yeah. that worked where they were told that this sounds interesting it to sounds me, interesting but, but yes what is the widespread appeal yeah. it's still attached to their their flagship devices so there's a certain level of faith um that yeah. it could be significant enough to pull people in. I, I'm not sure that I buy it, It's though. to pull people well, in yet, to try and make more money. Yeah. But, but, and yet swappable I mean, and what, batteries are like a thing of the past. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> you know what I mean? And SD, and SD cards and, and things like that. But, yeah. but what I think is interesting is that, like, pro, I think Project Aura and those phone blocks are, like, way on one side of the spectrum where it's truly tinkerer and it's, you know, practically, you know, like Lego mind storms mm -hmm. for your phone. Right. But these are, you know, this potentially is the Motorola flagships and the LG G5 is a major release. And these are like consumer grade accessories, consumer grade, you know, kind of um, modules that are being snapped onto these major mainstream phones. So clearly there's some belief that there would be a demand or a market for these. And I think, Flo, you're right. I think it taps on it's a way to make more money because they can make more of these things that snap on and those are that's another SKU that they can sell. Yeah, subsidize um, the what, phone through the carrier and then try and sell extra accessories. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then mm -hmm. and then you have the potential to license the connector or license the mm -hmm. technology to make the accessories to other companies and you know do, then you get the Belkin you know, the Belkin module that snaps on a battery pack and the Mophie module and all this sort of stuff. And they're paying license fees back to the manufacturer because they want to connect onto the platform. Uh, it's just a matter of whether or not the customers will be buying. And that's what we don't know. So maybe yeah, it'll be it's like, interesting. Maybe it'll be like curved displays where I felt like LG and Samsung were sort of arguing or fighting for, for that for a little while between each other. Well, and this, mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, the, I mean, it's it's the it's the classic hardware thing where yeah. it, it's like, does this actually solve a problem, or is this something that we can do and think it's neat, and yeah. we're providing a solution for a problem that doesn't exist? Uh, and whether or not, you know, like I, I don't know if this solves a problem. I mean, I'm not enough of a camera guy to want a wide angle lens to put on my phone, but maybe people want that. You know, that sounds neat. You know, the skateboarder kids want it, so maybe they want to do that. So, but uh, you know. So, uh, man, somebody in chat just uh, asked me, you know, didn't, oh, it was Virgil. Didn't Palm do this? And I forgot. Palm had the handspring visor uh, oh, I prism. The with I have the visor. I it have, uh, so Brian, underneath this modular story, I put in a video and I timed it to kind of where somebody is is showing off all the little components. It's kind of so, fascinating. Uh, dude, you know, dude, I totally had, I had a handspring visor and I didn't have the camera component here, but I had the cellular like data, like modem connector. Oh my gosh. And it was great because you could like, you could connect your PDA to the internet. It was, I could send emails, whatever. It was awesome. It was so cool. <laughs> Worked then. I mean, I Man. don't know. Was this a big mover for, for Palm? I, I can't remember. That was a long time. Well, well, keep, it, keep in mind, keep in oh, mind that Handspring, Handspring was the upstart company that ex Palm employees started. And uh -huh. then, yeah. and what they did was they innovated the PDA is that the, the Palm pilots were just PDAs and then Handspring came out and Handspring had these expandable modules and then Palm bought Handspring. Uh, and, and, yeah, and so it kind of came back around full circle, but that was the only innovation going on in, in PDAs in 2002 or so. Um, oh man, I loved, I bought visors for my entire family. They were great. They were, oh, that was a great device. Innovation, PDA <laughs> innovation in hey, 2002. Man, PDAs oh. were, I had one in PDAs. high school. I loved it. It was great. Oh man, I remember PDAs. Yeah. So cool. 
I had really, I had a really bad one. I that I got on some random like eBay wannabe Woosh. site. Com. Yeah, before its day. <laughs> yes, it was really bad. It was really big, but it made me it made me feel powerful because I could it store did. all my contacts it, in there. It did. I used it to uh, translate in Spanish class. <sighs> oh my! How far nice. we have come. Uh, cool. Real quick before we get to apps, I want to kind of make the announcement, although I think the winners of last week's Next Bit yeah. giveaway probably already know, and I know at least one of them does, does because I heard from them on Twitter. Um, maybe the other one doesn't, and I'm telling you something uh, before you found out already, but last week we did announce that a couple of uh, fans of this show, if you tweeted out a certain thing uh, between last week and this week, you would possibly win one of Next Bit Robin's, uh, one of the Next Bit Robin Mint Night Edition devices. Two winners were selected: uh, Matt Horton, as you see here, who made a few, <laughs> who made a few in Sketch. So not only oh did Matt, oh my gosh, above and beyond, Matt was like the the A student. Yeah, like, uh, here, let me uh, put this all together. And even Next Bit liked it. See, I know. <laughs> well, hey, he just did some work for Next Bit, basically. <laughs> Uh, so good work, Matt Horton. You've been contacted. You'll be getting something. And he even said on Twitter, Jason was right. There are real winners. There you go. Uh, also, Wesley Faulkner uh, it was the other winner of the Mint Night Edition saying, I would love the color combo of chrome and carbon fiber. That would be one nice. slick phone. I agree. Uh, so see, I, uh, there are winners. And I got to say, the next bit continues to turn heads literally in the elevator at my office today, someone was like, oh, hey, how do you like that phone? Like, it, it, it turns heads. The, the color combinations definitely turn heads. So uh, um, I'm jealous of these midnight editions. I know. Theirs are yeah. going to stand out from yours, Ron. Theirs are Hello. just harder to find than yours. Not fair. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, congratulations. And uh, thanks to everyone for, for doing that. And maybe, I don't know, maybe somewhere down the line we can do it again. All right, let's uh, take a look at a couple of apps. Do you spend a lot of uh, data on Netflix? On your... I spend a lot of data on other things. Okay. Video or just Snapchat? Okay. Snapchat was using a lot of my data, so I had to stop. See, that was right. I had to put that away. Um, <laughs> and tethering. I use a lot of data for tethering. Oh, yeah, my okay. Because yeah, I use my tablet on BART to like check email and, mm -hmm. you know, talk in Slack because it's just a lot easier. The size of do it. Not have, do not have unlimited data? No. Oh. Mm. I do not have unlimited data. I quit it because I wanted a, I don't know, cheaper phone bill. Or something. Oh, no. right. okay. I don't know. That something works. happened. It's reasonable. Something happened there. Uh, but some things are happening with Netflix as well. Uh, Netflix has now introduced new cellular data controls for everybody, so you don't have to worry about watching Netflix on the train and Everywhere having else. some pain. <laughs> trying to think of something that rhymed in that. Next, Netflix usage does dominate the web at peak times. And because of that, data usage controls have been highly requested. So Netflix is rolling out those controls with the ability to limit streams to 600 kilobits per second, which equals around three hours of video per gig of data streamed. Netflix offers the ability to limit to Wi-Fi or scale up on mobile networks all the way up to unlimited data which is only recommended for those with unlimited data plans. Which you do not have anymore. Which I do not have anymore. Mm. No. I share 10 gigs between five people. Mm. It's ridiculous. Wow. I don't know. I don't know how you do that. I don't, I don't know. Well, you do live your anymore. life probably on Wi-Fi for the most part. I do. Yeah, so do I. I do. Yeah. Uh, this is good. <laughs> I, f I find it funny that Netflix still dominates the amount of traffic, uh, internet traffic that moves, and yet... The one thing you hear is that there's nothing on Netflix to watch. Okay, can I just say, I was totally thinking that when I was kind of yeah. reading this out loud, I was distracted by my thought, which was that Netflix, I don't watch it anymore. Like, I asked if I could quit it the other day so we could save a couple bucks. <laughs> Did you and ask Netflix? And they no, said, no, you can't. I asked my fiance, and he's like, no, 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 we still pay for that. And I'm like, really? Because, like, we don't really watch it. Like, we watch it once a year, and that's when Orange is the New Black is back. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, it's, I, w I wonder how, m I would love to see, and this is completely off topic. It but is. I would, love to, <laughs> I would love to see the breakdown of not even individual titles, but content type to see if the majority of that traffic from Netflix is their originals, Orange is the New Black, Daredevil, Love, yeah. you know. 
versus all friends. The other, all the various <laughs> shows and that sort of thing. All that sort of thing. But um, or is it uh, the movies or TV shows or whatever it is? Are there people binge watching multiple seasons of Fixer Upper on Netflix, or are there people you know um, watching old movies and or documentaries or anything like that? I'm, I'm because the thing is that I, I just keep reading. It seems like every week I read that here's a list of the movies that are leaving Netflix, and now there's like nothing else to watch. But then you know, I know there are millions of people watching Daredevil and watching you know Jessica Jones and and Orange Is the New Black and 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 House of Cards. So yeah, I'd be curious what that traffic breakdown is. Uh, I think knows? I think I read somewhere that in 2015, uh, Netflix at peak times, at peak internet times, was about like 37 percent of all internet traffic. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. That's crazy. It's I think it's just yeah. all the people discovering streaming. <laughs> just discovering. <laughs> Because my parents just discovered that they could oh, like, yeah, cut my the cord, have, yeah, and right. they're like, Netflix yeah. is amazing, all these things. I'm like, you guys should try Hulu. <laughs> like, <laughs> Hulu is even my- like, oh, did you know that, that Amazon Prime that you pay for also comes with streaming? I know, right? And they're like, mm-hmm. what? Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my all mother-in-law right. also loves Netflix. I, you know, I, I watch Netflix all the time, either the originals or just like, you know, binge watching like old stuff that I love. You know, like old, you know, old 10 seasons of the X-Files or whatever, which I'm currently working my way through. Um, wow. I think it's just a combination. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this, this doesn't help me because I, I'm, I'm on the train underground. So yeah. and Netflix, you can't, can't watch offline. I, know. So. I would love if it were help. for Google Play because I do, like when Orphan Black comes in, I do watch, I can't wait. I just want to watch it on BART, like on the mm-hmm. way home, you know, and just take it in. So. Yeah. I like how this turned into like Netflix is, you know, yeah, helping help me all out with little data. And then it's like, <laughs> but uh, why are you still watching Netflix? Like what brings you to it? <laughs> there's a lot of kids, like uh, from the, uh, the parent parent perspective, there's a lot of kids. Maybe that's why it was introduced. Cause they were like, all these parents keep that, losing their data and getting mad true. at us. That very well could Cause been. their kid won't like be quiet during very whatever well they're trying be. to do. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> Very good point. Here, just take the Netflix and just quiet. Here, just quiet. Your tranquilizer, the Netflix tranquilizer. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously, right. you guys. I actually, I was thinking about all of you. I went out to dinner with my mom for Mother's Day, and at the table next to us, there was this little girl. She was three or four years old, like all dressed up for Mother's Day. Her legs like dangling off the chair on the phone like the entire meal like and like it was like three hours of like watching youtube and playing games and like m- maybe netflix at one point and i was and she was adorable and like it was really cute but i was also like i don't know how i feel about this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> i just don't know how i feel i know you know and i i i can't throw stones because i've definitely been there where it's you just like <laughs> all like, i want just, All yeah, I yeah. want is to have a dinner where my where I could talk with my wife, and yes. pretty much I can tell you right now, the only way that's going to happen is if I hit you with this Netflix tranquilizer. So here you go, <laughs> and they they spent an hour oh, watching the tablet, and it was amazing <laughs> because so we got to, it was like date night. It was which no, you know not. normally we have to pay pay money for a babysitter. It was like no, you just watch that. <laughs> We're going to eat a nice steak dinner and get a nice bottle, you know, of wine and <laughs> you just, whatever. And then they all Ubered home. Yeah. Specifically, <laughs> like, not, not judging, not judging at all, because I've been there too. I have set my kid up with something on the tablet to also eat yeah. a quiet dinner as well. Uh, but it was just one of those things where I'm like, I'm really pro technology, but I don't know how I feel about this kid being like on the phone. Through all I mean, three hours is a long time, no matter it how was you a slice long, it. It was a slow restaurant and it was a long meal. And, so, And just, just for fun. the record, yes, bottle of wine. We were in Denver. It, it, this was a uh, restaurant yes, next yes, to the yes, hotel. Yes. So, okay. So there was I no understand. drive. All right. All right. <sighs> all right. Ron. <laughs> well, so talking about ad blocking. <laughs> Oh, yeah, totally. Um, So uh, our good friends over in Scandinavia behind Opera uh, have finally rolled out, uh, built an ad blocking uh, to Opera Mini for Android. Um, They claim that their ad blocking is faster than Chrome with uh, with, uh, Chrome with an ad blocking plugin installed. Uh, Opera claims a 40% faster load time with their ad blocking enabled. And this is coming off the heels of Samsung's uh, browser supporting ad blocking. Uh, as well as, you know, we all know over at iOS, the Safari is supporting ad blocking. It continues the movement of ad blocking on mobile browsers. And as a content creator, it makes me cry a little 
uh, because I know this is just keep blocking money from uh, content uh, provide you know people who are making content and they're not getting paid for the ads because they're not being served, which is sad. But it does make the page load faster, which I guess it's it's the it's the constant oh you know Sophie's choice of using mm-hmm. your phone uh, fast or or seeing ads and paying your dues for the free content you get. So I don't I don't I, I I'm so torn on this topic. I'm so yeah. torn on it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, here here is a little different than what Samsung and Safari are doing, from what I understand, because there, I think their their browsers are capable of like ad blocking uh, plugins. I believe this is like go into the sure. settings of of Opera and you'll find the ad blocking toggle. Do you turn it on or off? So it's actually baked into the browser like by default. Seek the red uh, pill or the blue pill. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I stand as as far as this is concerned, but. An amp yeah. was supposed to solve this, though, yeah. right? Yeah, to a certain degree. I don't know. Yeah, Opera, I, uh, Opera continues to be the browser that is, like, better than all the other browsers and has all the things the other browsers don't have, but that but nobody uses. Nobody <laughs> ever uses Opera. I feel they're the yeah. little guys that are going, hey, look, we've got this, too, and it's better, and it works faster, and no one cares. Does everybody listen to Opera? Mm-hmm. Maybe they should name it, like, EDM. Yeah. Like EDM totally. browser. Then people indie, will actually, or, or indie or pop or something. Rock and roll browser. Like steampunk. I don't know. Whatever other music genres are popular. <laughs> or just call it days. music browser. American folk. New Capture American it all. folk. Just call it America. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why the is he doing it? Browser. Call the America browser. <laughs> where we, even though it's so not American. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's not. It's just yeah, as far from America as you can get. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I like it though. It's a good strategy. Yeah, I think that would work for them. All right, let's uh, check out an email to aaa at twit.tv. And uh, I'm trying to get the name here. Ken M wrote in. And it's a little bit of a long email, but uh, it gets there eventually. Guys, I've been watching your show for quite some time, pretty much ever since Flo joined. There you go. Uh, there's nothing especially newsworthy about that. But thing is, I'm an iPhone user. I know, I know, I'm the <laughs> enemy. But I love, love the iOS operating system. But thing is, I love your show. And I feel like I'm missing out on something by not actually being able to be a part of your show, if you know what I mean. You guys seem to have so much fun using and talking about your Android devices. I feel like I'm missing out. I even work on mobile space, selling mostly prepaid phones in the connection center inside Wally World. I didn't know Wally World was an actual thing. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> uh, and all I ever see is the worst side of Android, seeing as the only feedback I ever get from customers is when they're having a problem with their phones. 99% of the time, those are Androids. Uh, I have to deal with so many problems with so many mostly low-end handsets. Every time it's frustrating for me to have to figure out how to fix these handsets since they're all so different. All I ever see is the bad side of Android. I am the only one of my close circle of friends that has an iPhone. I love it so much, but your show makes me want to be in your club. (laughs) But I want my Android experience to be like my iOS experience, not like what I witness at work. I want a sleek, fast phone with an awesome interface, one that'll make me say, you know what? This Android OS isn't as bad as it seems. Can you guys help me find that phone with that experience? I don't want, I don't think I want to be a Galaxy person because everyone has a Galaxy. I never see too many HTCs, so I don't know much about them. I don't care too much for LG's button layout. Motorola seems kind of interesting. You never see too many of them, but I don't know if that's a bad thing. What do you guys recommend, or should I just stick with iOS and just enjoy Android from afar? Well, this email is getting really long. Thanks for my ramblings. <laughs> You did a really Ken. great job. That was awesome. Props to hey, Mr. Ken, Howell for Ken, Ken wrote the that. words. Uh, so it sounds like Ken's a little torn. I don't really know no what he's like. No <laughs> No, no. I mean, honestly, I mean, I think the answer is pretty clear for Ken. I think he goes, he goes Nexus six B. He goes or Nexus five X. He goes stock Nexus straight out. You know, buy from Google and go with the pure experience. Get the yeah. gold one if you want yeah. something fancy that you can mm. show off to your friends. Yeah, stand and, out and in, that, in a crowd. And that way, and that way, you'll avoid the the low end handsets that you're dealing with, and you'll avoid the problems that you've seen at your job and things like that. It'll be a high end. Um, It'll be a high-end device, and it will give you the pure Android experience. Yeah. So are, are yeah. we are we recommending the Nexus Five X though at this point? Are we? Is that well? You you have one. Would you recommend it or? I think we're recommending. We're recommending. I, I think Ron's 6P. recommending. We're the 6P. recommending the Six P. I'm so happy. Yeah. 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 I mean, what, what do you what what do you think, Gina? I, you know, the 5X, well, I, I've heard, Jason, did I mishear this? You, the, your wife returned her 5X? Oh, she, she hates her 5X. The 5X is not in use anymore. She couldn't stand it. 
She couldn't do it because it was, it was, it's kind of janky. It's a little bit yeah, janky, which my, my jank. experience has. So I wasn't sure if like all about Android had officially sort of blacklisted the five. <laughs> we have, saying. we have come out in support. What is the official stance? But no, agreed, agreed that the Nexus experience seems like, sounds like what Ken is looking for. Um, but I'm just torn because this is the Nexus experience and it's not, so, not such a great experience. I know, right? It's uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely a big. Uh, I think it's a it's a mark in kind of the history of the Nexus devices, or at least one of the marks. Some would say that the Nexus Nine is a mark uh, in the history of Android hey. devices. Ron Richards is not one of those someones. I'm not necessarily not. one of those someones, but a lot of people agreed with Ron Amadio's uh, point on on that regard. But um, yeah, I mean, you know. That what I showed it off earlier. This is a great phone, the HTC 10. And if you like HTC devices, as it says in here that you, well, you say that you don't see very many of them. I don't know if that means that you like them or not, but this is a nice device. Um, having said that, supposedly HTC is going to have some Nexus devices out here pretty soon. Supposedly. If you're willing to wait, uh, you could kind of get the best of all worlds. Get an HTC device that is also supported by Google because it's a Nexus device. I have something weigh on me heavily. And uh -huh. I know Ron's going to have a comment about this. But have you considered a Samsung device? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, because if you come from the world of iPhone, like Samsung makes really pretty phones. The camera on those phones is just phenomenal. Um, there are extra features like Samsung Pay, which you're not going to get on anything else. And yeah. Samsung Pay is pretty awesome. Um, the only thing is... The interface, but since you don't come from the world of Android, you might be able to withstand the interface and live with it and like it. Learn to love it. No, I mean, <laughs> I know a lot of people who, yeah. I know a couple of people who have used the Samsung phones and said, oh, okay, this makes more sense than the stock Android phone you gave me. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the truth is in the Android world, you can you can do a lot with just installing, like, like I did on the HTC, the HTC yeah. 10, install the Google uh, Now Launcher yeah. and... Feels closer to stock. He did say in his email, can you guys help me find the phone that uh, I don't think I would be a Galaxy person because everyone has a Galaxy. I know. That doesn't necessarily mean that but everyone it's has out an of iPhone contention. too. Uh, that's true. That's so yep. well, there you go. I don't know. Ken, I hope that you are a little less torn now than you were at the beginning of reading this email. I will say between a Nexus device and a Samsung device, if you decide to buy one of those, I think you have more uh, resellability value in case you end up completely With a Nexus it. versus a Samsung? Nexus like, or a Samsung. Oh, oh, just in both At of least them. the Nexus yeah, would be like not super exorbitant and expensive where you're like, ah, I just like dropped $500 on an extra phone. Whereas at least right. a Samsung, you could, you could sell that thing for up to it. You mean you can get you could get somebody to buy that a year? Are you say you can't sell a Nexus though, or you can, but if you couldn't, at least it's not. I don't know. Maybe I'm just. It's my perspective. I wouldn't mind having the Nexus as a backup phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. Hope that helps, Ken M. And um, let us know uh, yeah. where you land. <coughs> we want to find out where you land once you make your decision. All right. With that said, it's time to battle in the arena, arena, arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. Uh, I just realized I've not made the poll for the next thing, so I'll be doing that frantically while you're showing off your app. Me? Uh, but, well, you're not, you're not going yet. I'll help you out here, Jason. I'll, I'll take this. I'll, I'll tell you all about the arena. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Because last week, uh, we had four wonderful apps, including a great app from our guest, and when I checked in on the arena uh, at the end of last week, I accepted my fate that I was going to lose to the guest. And I'm excited to see that I won. You won. 42%. Uh, app, app, app volume control came in first. Uh, and then our guest's uh, app, Fit Cat Watch Face, came in second with 32%, uh, followed by Fast Like a Fox at 21% and Pang Adventures at 5%. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So that gives us arena totals. Uh, through 18 weeks, Jason is currently still in first with six wins, but I'm sneaking up behind with five wins, as is Flo with four wins, and our guests and Gina uh, with three wins. And so Gina <laughs> is back to uh, try to defend the honor of the guest uh, camp uh, this week. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 
glad to get back into it and, and I get to sit back and watch uh, Jason go first now. So. You do. Thanks for uh, managing that. That allowed me to get a head start on things. Um, and congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Uh, you were nice. Even my best guy friend was telling me when we went camping this weekend how great your app pick was. Jeez. <laughs> Just, I just want you to know, I went camping with him for four days. This is what I hear, heard about how great Ron is. <laughs> you can't even escape Ron. I can't even escape Ron when trip. I go to the woods. Jeez. Okay. Jeez. What, what, what about your other, what about your best girlfriend? What does she think? <laughs> I have not Ron, asked her like, yet. Ron is totally a guy's guy. Because I also had a guy friend at one point be like, man, that Ron is so cool. He had this great t-shirt on this one time. I really wish I could get that t-shirt. Like, I, I, And I was like, oh. Yeah, I mean, sure, Ron's cool, but it's totally... <laughs> I love that. Everybody's best guy friend loves Ron. So <laughs> was great, dude. It was Jeez. just like, yeah, 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 I like that Ron. <laughs> what is going on here? I, I'm just going to say that... I can Gina feel his Flo ego emanating over... Yes. <laughs> Gina and Flo, I like both of you a lot. I like your choice of friends better. So there you go. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> wow. See, I wouldn't have shared that unless Flo made me think of it. Uh, so, as I, you know, I didn't, I didn't want Ron's head to expand well, the boundaries he's of the in my Skype real frame. world now. Even my mom talks about him. But anyway, we'll talk about that some other day. Everybody, stop talking about Ron for a second. Here. Remember when Ron got to hang out with Ryan Reynolds? Oh, oh thanks. Forgot about that. Thanks. That is so Ron. <sighs> that guy's oh. so cool. Jeez. Oh, Look at him, he's shooting pool I know, with him, too. He's, like, he's so, like, calm and collected. He's just like, yeah, man, Ryan Reynolds. With Ryan Reynolds and that guy from Silicon Valley. I, I forgot Dude. his name. I forgot his name. He was awesome. He was, he, he was way more fun than Ryan Reynolds. Oh, I'm so, sure. Yeah. They're they're both really good friends now, aren't they, Ron? Yeah. Aren't cool. they? We yeah. Can. Yeah, I'm sure. We now, so, yeah. Um, all right, let's stop talking about how cool Ron is. <laughs> Show title, Ron let's is so cool. Real. Let's get serious now. We've, we've had our fun, jokey little segment talking about how cool Ron is. You know, had fun with that jokey segment. Now it's time to get serious. Are you ready? You ready? Yeah, you. Come here. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I can't focus I'm now. ready, Jason. Thank you, Brian. Tell me. If you want to have super control... I'm talking like more control than you've ever had over rotation, screen rotation on your device. Yeah. <laughs> you want to lock it into portrait? Uh, yeah, portrait. Uh, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> portrait? Uh, okay, that works. You want to lock it into horizontal? You want to do reverse horizontal? Yeah, you can do all this stuff. It's an app called Rotation Orientation Manager. And as you can see, it's not running right now, but I'll go ahead and turn it on, and now the service has started. So now what you get is, by default, what we're setting here is global orientation for the system. I could lock it into reverse portrait. Boom. Now it's that way if this is what I so choose. Uh, I could go forced portrait the normal way, forced landscape, whatever. Uh, if, if you are a super fan of orientation, then this is your... Uh, your app. Um, so this is kind of obviously tweaking the global orientation. What you get into, though, is you can have per app settings. So if you have a certain app that you want to always lock, let's say I would imagine like maybe reading apps or whatever, if you want to always lock it into a portrait thing and I don't know, sometimes, you know, you're laying down while you're reading and that kind of throws it off. So you could go in and you could find your reading app or whatever and set for that specific app, whatever it happens to be. I'm just going to use this as an example. And you can set an orientation on a per app basis and basically set it for that. So anytime you're running the Kindle app or whatever it happens to be, it's always going to force that particular uh, orientation. Do the Maps app. I feel like that's like the best... What would real you world, what would you lock uh, real world, maps into? Uh, what would you what would you lock maps into? So my problem with maps is that it never rotates the way I need it to when I'm putting it in my little holder in my car. Uh, so I'd uh, want it to go like any way so that it's So you'd you know. want it to force uh, landscape. Uh, right? or how do you put it in your yeah, car? Yeah, I would want it to force landscape. Force landscape. Uh, I believe it's running. Let's go into maps. Hey, yep. what do you know? Boom. Nice. What do you and know? And you don't have to turn it. 
it's always going to do this. No, don't, don't. This is like this is like my app last week, but I for knew, orientation. I knew you were going to say that, Ron. That's so cool. I love these apps. I love these apps for giving you this control. Uh, uh, apparently, this is <laughs> too much control. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Auto rotate on. Come on. Okay, uh, wait, wait, okay, wait. So, Sell it to me, though. Why did they just do that? I don't know. I don't know. So that's, it keeps you the, in the orientation. I don't know. It's a feature. It's a feature flow. <laughs> Sorry. Just curious. It says behind. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know. It should switch. I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> it's okay. It happens. This is, this is, this is all, oh, auto rotate. So let's see. So forced portrait. So that's global. And then we'll do menu or maps, forest landscape, go out here. Yeah, it's not like switching back. You're right. That's a good catch. Sorry. Uh, but it's, it's back now. Um, okay, so that's okay. Whatever. As you can see, there's also widgets. So there's a bunch of different widgets. So this one is kind of like the one that you can use to, you know, hop between mm -hmm. different modes or whatever. You can also, I think there's... Different widget. Well, what are some of the other widgets? A toggle service widget. There's toggle between two modes. So you could set up two modes that you have and uh, swap between the two. Like, you know, I would imagine that would be forced uh, portrait, forced landscape, or whatever you want to do. And uh, all that kind of stuff. So if you want, I, I think the reason that I like this probably more than any of the other features, though, is just assigning, there they are. There are the uh, different widgets. Assigning them on a per app basis. Because sometimes you have an app and it does weird little things depending on the orientation. And this way you can assign it um, that way. There's also floating bubble uh, functionality if you like that sort of thing. Where is the floating head? Uh, and, you know, tapping that will kind of bring it up so it's always there. I don't know if I necessarily always like that showing. So you can have it in quick notification instead. And where is it? Yeah, there it is. It's up at the top. So you can have that kind of always showing in your notification shade and kind of out of the way. Uh, so this is Rotation Orientation Manager. Obviously, there's a little bit of work that probably needs to be done for it to snap back into uh, the normal orientation when it goes to the desktop, uh, the home screen. Or maybe I have it set up uh, funky. I don't know. Uh, thank you. That looks perfect, Brian. Orientation Manager uh, Rotation. Free. There's also a $0.99 cent upgrade uh, inside the app to... Um, bring tasker compatibility and also backup and restore of your settings Ooh, tasker compatibility yeah there you go rotation orientation manager all right so ron you are not next because you nope. won so florence because i rule yeah that all right flo you're oh, next brother and so good, good luck I've been looking for different camera apps to use that do fun new things. You know, I go out with my phones, I like filters, I like these things. So one app I just came across is called Camera MX. Now, from the get-go, it looks like just your regular, regular old camera app. It's got uh, your live filters here. Uh, Lomo, black and white, Sepia. Uh, here's a fun little What is mirror. it called? Camera MX? Camera MX. Here's the kaleidoscope in case you want to make, you know, <gasps> some groovy pictures. Um, it's fun if you're trying to have fun or you're bored one afternoon. Um, but the thing I really like about this app is that it has this live shot mode. So what it does is when you enable it, it takes extra f footage from a few seconds before the photo and it saves that. And I'm sorry, the brightness is up really uh, high so you can't read the description. So the nice thing about that is that if you're shooting moving subjects like children or a puppy or what have you, you want to ensure that you get every flick of the moment. So in this case, I'm gonna move it while I'm taking this shot. All right. So what it just did is it took a couple of pictures at the same time. It's gonna save all of them right now. And then what you can do is you can choose, you can make an animated GIF out of it if you want. You can see what the shot looks like by pressing down and holding. Kind of like the force touch. Oh, yeah, it totally is. On yeah, iPhone. Yeah. And you can choose whether or not um, you want to save it as a GIF, as a movie, or look at the, um, I believe you can look at the individual. 
Oh, we know this. Uh, you can look at the individual stills. Yeah, edit your live shot, create a GIF video, or set as a live wallpaper. It's kind of fun, you know, fun little thing to do with the app. Uh, there's also other editing things that you can do to it, um, like up the brightness, the sharpness, crop it, uh, you know, add an effect after the fact. It's a camera MX. Nice. It's a different different little camera app with a little... I mean, it's totally it totally replicates that that functionality on on iOS where yeah. you hold down and. I just thought it was kind of neat. I just thought it was kind of a neat little trick that it does. You know, you don't mm -hmm. always get everything you want from one app, especially not the stock camera app. Totally. So. Absolutely. All right. So that is Camera yes. MX. And is that is that free? I believe <laughs> it is free. It is free. The developer, it almost from this distance, it looks like Apple Labs Corp. But uh, I'm assuming that's <laughs> not. Oh Apple. my gosh. No. Epic. Epic. Okay, I thought it said Apple oh. Labs too, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> do, do the photos go up to photos, the Google Photos automatically? Yeah. Uh, well, Google Photos will ask you if you want to back up the folder. Right, if you want to back up that folder so, and they all yeah. get yeah. yeah. And that's what I set up, which was kind of nice. Yeah, Excellent. Very nice. All right, so that is Camera MX. Uh, Gina, I have your app installed, so I will go ahead and show it off. Talk about it. Yeah, cool. So my app this week is uh, a Learn to Code app. It's named very simply learn Python. Um, this is actually one app of like a whole series of apps made by this company called Solo Learn. There's Learn Python, Learn JavaScript, Learn CSS, Learn HTML, Learn Java. They're each a separate app. Uh, I chose Learn Python because Python's a handy language that they use over at Google. So I thought it'd be a good, good way to show off these apps. Um, it's a really, really simple learn to code app that you can do these like tiny bite sized lessons that you can do on your phone. Um, I was actually, yeah, there you go. Good job. Good job, Jason. I know so that like, Python is a language. You know that I Python got it right. is a programming language. Well, yeah, so it starts really basic. I mean, this is like lesson one what Python is a programming language. Um, and here's, you know, the latest version. And so you, you get a lesson, you read it, and then you get a quiz oh. and you get to answer a question. Uh, <laughs> and you get it wrong or you get it right and you gain points as you get things right and you rack up achievements they totally gamify your progress through learning to code um and i i've done a lot i've done a bunch of learn to code uh, courses and i've used a lot a, a lot of different apps and what i really like about this one is that they're so the the, the lessons are so simple and i've i've been i've done about a dozen of them i mean i i was meeting a friend for lunch today i got there a little bit early to the restaurant and i wound up while i was just standing there waiting to be seated i you you know, ran through three lessons. Um, they're just very, very bite-sized and easy to do. And the app is really well-developed. Like there's a point where you get where you are actually writing code into an interpreter in the app itself and running the code to see whether or not it works. Um, and there you go, Jason, lessons are locked unless Fine. you progress through the lesson before right. it. Gina, answered. answer this question because I've tried four times now. I keep getting it wrong. It's only the second question. Wait, there's only three possible answers. I know, but they keep changing the order of them? Ah. ah, yes. I believe that, uh, uh, I think it's C Python is an implementation of Python. I could. I, You're right. See, yeah, this is. There we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so there, so there you go. So you just finished lesson one, which is what is Python. So that unlocks uh, lesson two, which is about the Python console. Um, so there you go. There's print hello world. You can tap on try it yourself, and that'll run. That will run the code. Ah, uh, yeah, there's neat. so there's your co code editor. You can ta you can tap run and it'll print hello world. Ah, so this is like uh, Duolingo so. for coding. Love it. Exactly, you it's like Duolingo your own. for coding. Exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, and there's hints. If you need a hint in any of the exercises, the code writing exercises, you can store the snippets of code that you write as you're working your way through the lessons. Uh, you, there's a little discuss button there down at the bottom if you need a hint or if you want to you know view a forum where. Where other learners are, you know, figuring out how to do the lessons. There's a fill in the blanks exercise. So that's that. That's print. Yeah, if you type print, that'll that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, print high. I apparently need to pay more and more attention to 
the lessons. There you go. So, there okay. you go. Um, so yeah, nice. Very good. You didn't get a jit. And like, and, and so there you go. Python code often contains references to the comedy group Monty Python. That's why you see the word spam and eggs in code lessons. So it's got these little informational <laughs> bubbles that'll tell you things about the culture and the community around the language, which I really, really like. Interesting. Um, yeah, it is like Duolingo for coding and there's a web version and there's an iOS version, but I have to say that the Android version, I, I would have told you that I thought that learning how to code on your phone would be very difficult, but this app, I have to say, does a re is a really nice, simple implementation of it. Um, and Jason, you'll notice they didn't, it didn't ask you to sign in or sign up. Um, but if you slide the left, um, menu out you can sign in either with facebook or google or just create a regular account and and if you when you do that you're logged in and you you rack up points and unlock achievements and you can see how you compare to others on a leaderboard it's super super gamified to just kind of you know motivate you to go through more lessons um yeah, there's the code playground, which is a which an ID where you can start writing Python and save snippets and share snippets, um, and just try try things out as you as you use them. Yeah, I was really I was really impressed with this app. This is Learn Python, and like I said, if you want to learn other languages, I know that there's JavaScript, CSS, HTML, Java, C plus uh, plus, and they're each individual apps. They're made by a company called Solo Learn. So look for Solo Learn. Yeah, there you go. Similar, so it's in similar courses inside and Swift as well. Maybe I should be taking that Swift course. Guys, yeah. start. Gotta get go. ahead. Gotta start yeah, exactly. Now. I, I want to build Android apps in Swift. I should, uh, <laughs> I should download that. Man, so this is really. That's what I got. This is really nice. Yeah, no, it's really, yeah, it's, it's, well. really, it's really nice. And it's very low. Uh, it doesn't expect in personal information. You don't have to sign up. It's just like here's a couple of tidbits about Python. Here's a quiz. Uh, um, there was a question was about what version of Python this yeah. teaches. Uh, I don't know if that's a relevant uh, question. Two lives but. left. Yeah, that is a relevant question. I think it's, I want to say 1.7. Let me double check that. Uh, uh, because that's a... 32. That is, that, is a good, that is a good question. All right. I'm really bad at this, uh, but I imagine <laughs> I probably need to focus on it a little bit more than I'm able to do right now. Uh, oh, so it, it, awesome. it's, it's Python 3. Three, the, the the this course covers Python 3.x, so whatever the the it's the most recent version mm -hmm, of Python. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and they the version used in this course course is C Python, which is one of the more popular implementations of of Python. So when to, when you start the lesson, it gives you all the information about what version you're using and and all that. Uh, so um, yeah, you can check it out. Learn Python. Get good at coding. Oh, yeah, there's a glossary. So when they refer to terms, you can tap on them and see the definition or you just go through the glossary. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Love it. This is really nice. Cool. Um, and offline capability. You can download it. Oh, yeah, online. offline capability. Oh, I got to do that for when I ride the subway. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, excellent. It is Learn Python and Solo Learn. Learn to code. Yep, apps. by Solo Learn. Exactly. Uh, excellent. That's free. Great pick. All right, so that is Gina's run. I have yours installed. Thank you, and sir. I'll show it off. Yeah, so my app, <coughs> excuse me, my app is called Swipe Edge, and uh, basically the whole premise of it is that it, uh, the Samsung Edge has got that little edge kind of side of the the phone, the the side of the display where you can swipe and access stuff. This basically brings this to any phone, not just the Samsung Edge. But also what's interesting is that if for some reason you find yourself on one of those wacky OSs that don't have or wacky launchers uh, that don't have an app draw and you want an app draw, this can bring an app draw to your phone, uh, which we all know how important an app draw is. Right, everyone? Uh, so, uh, there, so there in the settings, uh, as Jason is doing, as you can see, uh, what you're able to do is you're able to customize um, exactly what apps appear in your draw, as opposed to seeing every app that you've installed on your phone, you can just specify the exact ones that, that you want to use. It's important to note that this is not a launcher. This is something that uh, exists on top of whatever launcher you use and it works with every every different launcher. Um, and it takes a second, uh, Jason, I think you got to back out of the settings and then it refreshes before they uh, fill back in with it. Um, uh, but basically, what, when you swipe to the left, you've oh, got... I see. There, yeah. yeah, there they are. Um, you've got a couple of options. When you swipe to the left, you can you can either close the swipe area, which is the far far left one. The middle one is the app draw, which currently right now in the settings is set to open the app draw automatically. You can turn that off and only access it when you tap the middle column of it. Oh, is that um, what it's doing? I got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So go back to the settings. Uh, go back to the ah, app settings. Ah. 
No, no, not your app. Don't push. Come your on, app. come on. So, so go app draw. Yeah, draw and then auto uh, draw auto open. There you go. Yeah. So now, if you swipe, it won't auto open. So you now, if you tap the middle section, it will go and yep, it will load them back in. It's got a refresh. There they are. So there they are. Cool. Um, so what you can do is you can specify whether text appears on those apps or not, whether you see the name of the apps or just the icons. You can change the color. You can change the size of the area. You can change whether it's transparent or not. It gives you full uh, flexibility over the look and feel over, uh, over both the draw as well as the edge. Um, so you can change what color that little side thing is. Maybe you want it to be transparent and you don't want it to appear at all. Um, you can, you know, and just have it be there kind of hiding. Um, you can do that if you like. See, there it is, transparent. So, um, and uh, you can also change the, the height and the width of the bars. It's really super customizable and it can just give you a little quick way to swipe from the right and be able to access um, your favorite apps, whatever you want. Um, and it also has additional controls that allow you to control the sound level and you can add in your phone lock from this area as well too. Um, you just swipe it and it will lock the phone. Um, and it's all there in the, uh, in the settings as well. So it's called Swipe Edge. It's uh, free in the Google Play Store. Um, and, you know, like I said, it, it, you know, it, it's uh, taken that neat little interface that the uh, Samsung Edge did bring to their phones, to any phone, um, as well as gives you a quick customizable app draw that you can utilize if you like, if you uh, want to use that. So there you go. Nice. Swipe, swipe Edge. edge. Or, yep. s or Swipage. Swipage. Because it's all one word. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> swipage. 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 Uh, hedge. <laughs> Let's see here. Okay, so we've got Rotation Orientation Manager. We've got Camera MX. We've got Learn Python. And we've got Swipage or Swipe Edge. Swipage. <laughs> <laughs> swipage. Swipage good. Uh, go to uh, bit.ly slash triple A show 265. Bit.ly slash AAA show 265 to place your vote for your favorite app this week. Go ahead and put in one vote for rotation because that's how I roll. But uh, it looks like pretty much it's practically a four way tie at this point. So you never know what's going to happen. And you, yes, you have the power to influence and change things. So do On that. On All About Android. On All About Android. I don't know about the real yes, world. Yes, it's a really good point. It's be a little more realistic, <laughs> but you know, might not have much. But yes, power to influence Sorry. much change in the U.S. No, Anyways, just... whatever. Uh, thank you uh, to everyone, those of you watching, and also thanks to all you all because you're all awesome. Everyone's awesome. Flo, Everyone's Gina, awesome. Ron, Everything is awesome. you guys are awesome. Thanks for doing the show. Aww. I thank mean, you, Jason, uh, Gina. Thanks. What's going on? What's what's new in the world of Gina? Uh, not too much. Not too much. I uh, actually, I got a new job. I started a couple of weeks ago here in New York Congrats. City. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. Really? Yeah. Thank you. What are you yeah. doing? Yeah, what are you doing? Yes, I am the new, a new director of engineering at a uh, a new agency here in New York called Postlight. Go to postlight.com. You can find out more about us. It's like Mad Men, but for like websites and apps instead of advertising. No kidding. <laughs> I didn't know yeah, this. To, yeah, yeah. We get to build websites and apps for, for clients. Of course, our clients are the coolest clients. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's like a real big change of pace for me, actually. I was going from like kind of running a really tiny, small, indie two-person company to like being, you know, like a manager and a developer on like a good-sized team and wow. working with like actual humans every day so that's really that's really exciting yeah and you yeah. have to go into an office and everything I, I i yes i go into an office in the Flatiron district here here in new york um although so, like a third of the team is remote so they're real remote yeah. friendly and sometimes i work at home but but yeah i've been going into the office and and seeing people and and, and sometimes uh set up at client sites um when that's appropriate and yeah so it's a whole new adventure it's been, it's been really cool i get to i'm hoping actually to be building some mobile apps for various uh clients depending on what our clients' needs are, so so that'll be that'll be exciting. I'm hoping to do some Android work, actually. That is uh, awesome, so, yeah. Gina. I had no That's idea. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And Think Up Makerbase are doing well and still around, and nothing there has changed. Uh, I just uh, yeah, I thought it was time to try try something new. Fantastic. So, this, I mean, I'm looking through the site. Everything looks really uh, really cool. I mean, it looks yeah, like a fantastic. Thanks. I mean, the design of everything that's listed on here looks pretty sharp. Um, yeah, fantastic. Postlight.com. Yeah. Check it out. Nice. Congratulations. Cool. Thank you. That's exciting news. 
That is really cool. And obviously, we, we always love getting you on. So we'll uh, be pestering you again to see what you'd like to come back. I, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I will be back soon. Right on. Thank you, Gina. Uh, Flo, hey. what you working on? Mm -hmm. Yes, you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Preparing for Google I.O. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. That's what I'm doing this week. Working on my walk-up pieces, getting my meetings together, getting my travel down to Mountain View together. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big week next week. Mm -hmm. So I just took a couple days off for my birthday. So now I'm going to get back in Ramp the fold. Ramp up. Yeah. All right, cool. I might see you there. We definitely will see each other there. Okay. All right. We'll do it. Yeah. Uh, we'll both be wearing uh, flower crowns. I have to order you goes, one. Right? I have to order you one. <laughs> right. And Good. fringe. We have to find some fringe as well. Okay. All right. I think we can make you that work happen. on that. Let me know. All right. Uh, what about you, Ron? Cool. Yeah. So uh, usual, like I said, I'm uh, earlier. I'm here in New York. Uh, back in San Francisco next week. I'll be back in studio next week. Uh, in the meantime, you can go to about.me slash ronxo where you can follow my travels on Instagram and Twitter and all that fun stuff. I need to be posted to Google Plus more often. I need to get that back in my new in my next bit Robin workflow. Uh, but also check out my uh, other site over at ifanboy.com, my other podcast where we talk about comic books. And you can also check out our podcast review of Captain America Civil War, the big movie that just came out. Uh, spoiler, it's really good. It's really uh, sad. And you can, you can hear us talk about that for about an hour as we break it down like comic nerds. Do so, there you go minute by minute, not minute by minute, oh, but darn yeah. close. Okay, so, yeah, <laughs> all right, someday soon, maybe. Uh, cool stuff, Brian. What about you? Uh, well, I'm busy doing screensavers on Saturday with uh, which both of you have hosted Jason, I Ron, be, yep. and Flo. Yeah, Gina, we're still waiting for you. <laughs> uh, but when I'm not working on that show, All I'm right. uh, also doing know how. Yeah, you seem ready, G Gina. You ready to come do screensavers with us? Yes. Oh, okay. yeah, sure. yeah, sure. Why not? Sure. Yeah, yeah why not? Uh, sure. Uh, but otherwise, I work on Know How with Padre, uh, and you can follow me at cranky underscore hippo on Twitter. I'll be doing screensavers this weekend. Oh, you will? Nice. Yep. I'm doing it, and I, finally, the unveiling of the uh, the, art, <gasps> the bar top arcade. That's right. I have to work on that. I have, uh, a lot, I have a lot of videos I have to edit for that. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be putting together, putting it all together on Thursday. I think we'll mm -hmm. do like a time lapse. That'll be cool. Talk with Diami, uh, who did all the woodwork and everything. So a lot of stuff to prepare. Yes. I, I feel it too, Brian. What's the first well, game you're going to play on there? I don't know. Marble Madness. Well, yeah, of course. Of course. That one. Maybe some has, Gauntlet? Has oh. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, Ooh, yeah I don't care. I just, I'm going to be so stoked to have it. I can't even tell you. It's been almost a year in the making, so I'm really looking you're forward to it. You're speaking my language here. Oh, yeah. Man. Get some get, get some Crystal Castles on there. Oh, yeah. Great. I mean, I, I got the trackball for that very reason, Ron. Oh, man. For, for that stuff. and for Marble Madness. So, yes, we'll be doing that this Saturday on um, new screensavers. But you can find me at about.me slash Jason Howell. Follow my music at yellowgoldmusic.com. More music is on the way. I've been working really hard on it. And uh, sign up for the Twit newsletter. We have a lot of, like, behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, look at things that are upcoming, all this kind of stuff to keep you informed on what Twit is doing. It's twit.tv slash newsletter. But that is it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Voicemails can be left at 347-SHOW-AAA. Leave us an email or a video mail to AAA at twit.tv, and we'll include you in the show. On Twitter, we are at Android Show. We have a subreddit, uh, twitaaa.reddit.com, that kind of informs some of the topics that we do on the show. Show notes and past episodes can always be found at twit.tv slash AAA. You can also find our episodes on YouTube, iTunes, all over the map, and you can catch us live every Tuesday, eh, 5.30 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode, the pre-IO episode of All About Android. Bye, everyone. <laughs>